Hello everybody, my name is Luke Mar and this is Hot La Mode. And today on Hot La Mode, we are coming to you with your 2023 Met Gala Roast and Review Part 1. This is only the first part, doing some heavy hitters firstly, but the other videos are coming, so don't worry if you don't see your faves. Now this year's Met Gala exhibition is titled Karl Lagerfeld, A Line of Beauty. If you want a longer explainer of that theme, check out our video, link in the description box below. We get into everything about Carl's work, his history, his life. And this year's gala theme in terms of the red carpet is titled In Honor of Carl, looking at all the different styles, designs from a bunch of different fashion houses like Chanel, Fendi, Patu, Balmain, Chloe, etc. Did anybody do that? No. But what did we expect? Am I on theme? Absolutely, I'm wearing Chanel Fall 2014, my favorite collection ever. <laughs> it's the supermarket collection, you know what I mean? And now that I've talked about myself enough, let's get into these looks. First up, we have Anna Wintour and Bill Nye. Listen, we're not gonna talk about Bill, we're just gonna talk about Anna. Anna is a dedicated Chanel woman. She always wears Chanel, so I'm not surprised by a very long dress coat style. It's full of embroidery, it's abstract, florals in what seems to be grayish purple and a very very light key lime green with black sort of motifs running throughout it as well. The length comes down to around below the knee and then there is a white sheath dress underneath. To be completely honest this to me feels kind of Carl. I think that the silhouette is very 1930s which is something that he really really loved. It's something that he honestly was often channeling so I'm not surprised by it. I understand people being like this is ugly because it's a coat dress over another dress. I get it. It can be ugly. I'm not saying it's not. I just think that there is a context there in terms of silhouette. Listen, the jacket fits really, really well. I do think it looks nice, you know, for people that like that kind of motif. It's not for me, but I'm going to yuck anybody's yum right now. But to be completely honest, it is not my favorite Anna Wintour Met Gala look by a long shot. Saw her earlier in the day. She was in this beautiful gold tweed skirt suit. She looked Phenomenal. This is not, in fact, phenomenal. It's there, but not phenomenal. Next up, we have Anne Hathaway, and she wore a custom Atelier Versace look. Listen, it is a strapless white tweed gown with matching arm warmers. Now, the thing that's great about this dress is it is a Versace dedication to Karl Lagerfeld. Gianni Versace himself and Karl Lagerfeld were very, very good friends throughout the 1980s and the 1990s. And I think the great thing about this look is that Versace is taking some really cool and critical Karl sort of codes. Tweed, like camellias, it's a little bit more Chanel inspired than anything else, but putting the Versace spin on it. As we can see, there are 3D flowers that create the sort of bosom area coverage. It's really cool, it's really fun, probably an homage to camellias. The rest of the dress is a form-fitting white tweed dress with these matching arm sort of sleeves. Chanel, tweed, white, easy. But the thing that I love about the look is that it has these beautiful sort of slashes that run throughout it. It's most definitely an homage to the iconic paperclip dress from Versace that is held together by gold paper clips, which are very much so a Versace signature, but also little baubles of pearls, which again, play into that Chanel iconography. That slit that runs right down the front and almost sort of showcases pelvic area is wonderful. The matching jacket with the gold lining and zippers is also great. Honestly, I think Anne Hathaway looks fantastic. I would say that she is one of the best looks of the night. She just understands the assignment. Congrats to Versace because they did a great job here. Next up, we have Bad Bunny wearing a jacquemus, which is a wonderful look to be completely honest. It is a white, wide jacket. There's a nice, crisp, clean pant, nothing too big, a white, sort of boot, really easy. But the thing that makes this look really, really intriguing from the front is sort of stole of flowers. It's long, it's big, it's bold, it's beautiful. It, it diverts from what we think of when it comes to menswear. Normally, men now with their suits will do something intriguing or interesting or a little pop of color or whatever. Usually they don't add a stole. In my personal opinion, not only is the stole great because it pays homage to a brand like Chanel, whose camellias are most definitely something that Karl Lagerfeld touched upon in his work. We can see in this fall 2005 look. The other thing that I think is really fun is that Fendi, as a fur brand, was often using stoles in their collections. There are these beautiful little stole styles that Carl would sketch. It's really fun, it's really cool, so it seems to me like there's a little bit of a mixture here. The other great thing, besides all of Bad Bunny's bad boniness, I love the fact that it's backless. The way that the stole wraps around, it's big, it's bold, it's beautiful. This totally diverts from what we think of as menswear suiting, where you expose the back. I also think 
think that it really fits in with the Jacquemus ethos of very south of France, body on display to a degree. Jacquemus doesn't really do a whole lot of red carpet and they don't really do a whole lot of red carpet for the Met. Big ass floppy hats off to the Jacquemus team. Next up we have Billie Eilish and she is wearing a custom Simone Rocha look. Now this is a black halter neck style with a built in bodice. There is a whole lot of lace and gem applique going on both on the gloves and at the waist area too. Now I'm going to be honest, I don't love the look personally. I think that it's a bit blah. I think it's a bit uninteresting. I think it's a bit meh. But do I think that this has provenance in the canon of Karl Lagerfeld iconography? Absolutely I do. Karl loved the halter neck style as we said in 1930s. It's very important to his work. And there is a whole dedicated section in the actual exhibit that had all of these black sort of lace looks lined up. A lot of them were sort of halter neck styles and they were sheer as well, which we see a lot of in terms of Billy. I also commend Billy for stepping out in something that is very sort of body conscious and it, it's definitely different than what she does. Normally when she does these red carpet looks now, she's very sort of big, bold skirt. There's a lot of sort of volume, but here it's really stripped down. And Simone Rocha is also very much so a volume designer. I'm intrigued to see that both of them have slimmed things down. I think it's a little bit busy. I get the waist belt with the sequins and embroidery. I understand it. I do love seeing the Simone Rocha sort of clusters of crystals going on in different places. It's a house code. And again, I do think that they captured the essence of Karl Lagerfeld's work through the halter, the lace, all of that. I just don't think that it is a wow piece. And it's a little bit cluttered, a little bit too much going on for me personally. I don't think that it captures Billy in the best light, but I do have to say that I do think it has that Karl lagerfeld -ness. Next up we have Cardi B and she is wearing the designer Chen Peng. Cardi obviously here is going for a Karl Lagerfeld look-alike dedication. It's, it's the gray hair, it's the white shirt, the black tie, white and black constantly. Quite a few of these. Not all great. I will say I think that Cardi did a better job than most. I think that the white collar shirt with the black tie could have been a little bit more realistic in terms of a much higher sort of Victorian kind of collar. But I do think that the dress itself is really magical. The way that it nips in the waist is wonderful. The way that we can see that there is quilting that runs throughout it at the bottom, we can really sort of see those lines crossing, paying homage to the quilted sort of bags of Coco Chanel and the fact that Carl promoted that quilting very much so throughout his career. The other thing is we can see these very large sort of camellias embedded all throughout this skirt. There are some very, very large, some kind of small. It's kind of very Chanel coated. And I would say that it's a little bit kind of lazy. And I think a lot of those Chanel styles are a little bit lazy. But I also think that Cardi here looks really amazing in this dress. I think the dress is impeccably done. The silhouette is gorgeous. It looks tailored to the gods on her. And to be honest, I really don't think you can fault anything with the look necessarily. Do I think that it captured more nuanced Karl Lagerfeld codes? No, but do I think that it tapped into Chanel house codes, which Karl was very much a promoter of? Absolutely. And on top of that, the dress is fitted phenomenally. The nuances are very Carly, and she looks really good. So I'm gonna take it. Next up, we have none other than Doja Cat. Now she is wearing a custom Oscar de la Renta gown. Now Oscar de la Renta and Karl Lagerfeld were also friends. A form-fitting halter style that is very much so backless and we can really, really see that. The backless element, I will say, kind of works with Karl's history. If we look at the Longchamp sort of design, even in their early 1950s, he was often focusing on the back. But the thing that really makes this look intriguing is the fact that it is hooded and has these little cat ears in this pearlescent, crystallization applique, and the fact that Doja Cat also literally looks like Choupette, Karl Lagerfeld's very famous cat. Now Doja Cat doing prosthetics we've seen before. It looks really, really great on her. And I will say that I knew we were gonna get some Choupette styles. I just didn't think somebody would do it this, this well. Doja looks amazing. Honestly, I think that if you're gonna pay homage to Choupette, this is the way to do it. Humanoid cat person and go for it. I love the fact that the cat ears are embedded into the actual outfit. They're not super over the top. They're not super ridiculous, but rather they're just a part of a beautiful dress. That's important. Fernando Garcia and Laura Kim are very smart. Now as for the rest of the look, it's very form-fitted in this crystallized applique. I'm not over the top about what's going on above the knee, but I don't think it's bad either. I think that it's meant to again be sort of a placeholder. 
What I do think really captures that Carl and Chanel ism in essence, more so, is this feather mermaid skirt, which in reality, if you look at a lot of Chanel or couture collections, you will see these sort of skirts. I personally think this is a reference to the way that Carl brought in 1930s aesthetics into his designs, especially at Chanel. I get it. It's not over the top. It's not super ridiculous, but it definitely does capture an essence of Carl at Chanel. I do think that Doja as Choupette is meant to be the real sort of wowzer of this, so I get it. I think the rest of the dress is meant to sort of be a little bit background to what's going on here, and I understand that, but I do think Oscar de Laurenti did a good job of letting the dress shine. I think the feathers really pay homage to Carl. I think the cat ears really hammer home that idea of Choupettiness. Meow. Meow. Wow. And the halter style, again, fits in with Carl's work, his legacy, so I love it. Next up, we have Dua Lipa, who was one of the co-hosts, so she really needed to hit it out of the park. Now, Dua Lipa wore a fall 1992 haute couture look by Chanel. She stripped away the jacket that originally showed up on the runway, as well as the hat, which I personally think was a little bit of an issue, but we'll get into it. Dua Lipa looks amazing. She fits into that tweed dress amazingly. And I do actually love the dress in and of itself. It is also something she said that she's had on her mood board for a very, very long time. So I understand if you get the opportunity to do it, you're going to do it. But I do think that out of all of the Chanel haute couture looks we could have chosen, it's a little bit simplistic. It's made up of a fitted bustier in this white creamy tweed. We can even see the darts and lineage and seams that run throughout. And then the bustier is actually kind of trimmed in different places around the straps and around the hem in black and silver corded sort of thread. It looks really cool. It looks threaded. It looks fun. I do really like it. And then there is this very large sort of skirt that flows out. It almost hits the floor. Again, we can see that that black and silver sort of cording goes. And then underneath that is a sort of frayed hem. Dua Lipa looks amazing. The dress fits her phenomenally. It's, she's a vision. But at the same time, I think that stripping away the jacket kind of takes away from it a little bit. I also think that stripping away from the headpiece also kind of takes away from it a little bit. I just think that that jacket, that collarless Chanel jacket really would have just said, ooh, and then you take it off right after. It's fine. It would have been okay. I just think that adding that jacket would been nice. Now, I did wonder if this was possibly inspired by the robe de steel, which was from the 1920s, was essentially a drop waist dress with a very large skirt and recreated 18th century French court dress. I don't think it really is, but but in my head, I, I keep thinking it only because of the tightness of the bustier, whereas the robe de steel was a little bit sort of wider and drop waisted. But I also wouldn't put it past Carl because he was somebody that loved the Rococo essence. I think it's a beautiful look. She looks amazing. She looks wonderful. I just think stripping away some of the important elements of that look from the runway is a bit of a hindrance. Next up, we have Emma Chamberlain. She is wearing a custom Miu Miu look. It is a cropped jacket in light blue with the white silk lining just coming underneath and is frayed. There's also a low slung floor length skirt with a high slit, a little belt, and what looks to be a Swarovski crystal sort of crop top in between those two sort of pieces. The headband, I, I do love. It's Miu Miu, I get it. Mutual Prada never really says like, oh my God, I love Karl Lagerfeld. He was an amazing designer. So I understand it's a little bit more Miu Miu than it is is Chanel. And I will say that, you know, the crop style, the jacket, the skirt, I get it. We could say like 90 Chanel is a reference, but I don't really see it. I don't really believe it. I think that it's just a Miu Miu look. A Miu Miu wanted to do what Miu Miu wanted to do. And while I think it looks great on Emma, I don't think it's on theme. And that's my issue. Listen, if we're going to come and do Karl Lagerfeld Met Gala, let's do it. You know what I mean? Prada for a time owned Fendi. So like, why not go back in the archives and do some really cool, fun stuff like that? If this was like trimmed in faux fur, I think it it could have added a little bit more of a Chanel-ism. If this was embedded with fun sort of 1910s reconstructivist styles a la Chanel and Russian embroidery, that could have been fun. If Mutual Prada referenced the 1970s and the flowy styles of Chloe, that would have been very much so up her alley. But I think that this is just kind of Miu Miu doing Miu Miu, and I'm disappointed in that. Next up, we have Gigi Hadid, and she is wearing a custom Givenchy look. Now, Matthew Williams talked about the inspiration for the look. He said that the draping going on up on the bodice and also flowing out of the skirt was inspired by Carl's fan. Bullshit. He also said that the use of black was very big with Carl. 
Bullshit. And listen, could I go through and be like, oh my god, this is a Carl Lagerfeld reference? Yes. The sheer styles, sure. The applique on the sheer styles, sure. The zippers on the bustier, sure. I, I could. I could do all of that. But I don't think that that's really the truth here. I think Matthew Williams wanted to do what Matthew Williams wanted to do, and that was that. Do I think that Gigi looks amazing? Sure. She's, she's a model. Like, not expecting anything different. You know what I mean? The pelvic cutouts are great. She's a gorgeous woman. She's a beautiful body. You put some pearls and a black shield dress on her. She's gonna look amazing. But do I think that this is an in honor of Carl look? I do not. Matthew Williams is so full of shit the toilet's jealous. Okay. Gigi also was a Chanel girl. She was a Fendi girl. I just think that we missed out on some really cool, really fun looks. I don't think that this is Carl Lagerfeld, even though it's a sheer black dress, but you know what I mean? Anything could be anybody if it's a sheer black dress. Next up, we have Ice Spice. It's her first Met Gala, and boo, what a disappointment. I'm really sad. I love Ice Spice. I just think that Bellman did her very, very dirty. Now, she is wearing a floor-length white gown that is full of sheer lines that run throughout the entire dress and sort of help to contour the body to a degree. But do I think that this dress really is what Ice Spice deserves? Absolutely not. Not only do I think it's not on theme for Carl Lagerfeld, I also think that the issues of it are horrendous. I mean, look at the way that it crumbles in on itself, like bad infrastructure right under the bust area. Horrendous. Hideous. Awful. Disgusting. It just is not good. It's not a good dress, and that upsets me because I think Ice Spice deserved so much better. The other thing is, Carl Lagerfeld worked for Balmain. You have literal, literal archives that have those styles in them. What were they? What were they? Too, too dusty to pull out? I'm confused. I don't understand. I don't understand. My other issue with Bellman is, specifically for the exhibit, they made the Longchamp style, which in reality Bellman actually made, that was Carl Lagerfeld designed for the Walmart prize. Why didn't we do an exciting take on the Longchamp style. I mean, nobody else would have had the toile to do it. Nobody else would have had the sketch perfectly done so that it could have been made. The other great thing is, listen, while the front of the Longchamp dress is a little bit 1950s dowdy, I will also say though, the back of that dress is phenomenal. It's beautiful. We can see it on the sketch here. It's this gorgeous, sharp little V, especially for the late 1950s. Why not do a really exciting, over-the-top, body-conscious, body-showing-off decollete style of the back where, I don't know, it reached the crack. I don't give a shit. Shit. If she gives a shit, I understand that, then don't let it reach the crack. But the houses that Carl worked for do not have any leniency in my mind. You should be delivering amazing styles that reference your archives. And you give me that. And then on top of it, that shit doesn't fit well. Comment dit-on bullshit? Next up, we have Janelle Monet, and she is wearing Tom Brown. Conical sort of Tom Brown silhouette is really, really wonderful. It's made up of a crinoline sort of skirt that reaches, I pretty positive up to the breast line area. What has been placed over it is a very large tweed asymmetrical jacket. One side is white, the other side is black. It's crusted. It's piped in these little fabric flowers made of tweed, which I think is really, really cool. And there is a choupette cat bag attached, which I do kind of love. In the grand scheme of things, is this my favorite Tom Brown look? No. Do I love the fact that it is very Tom Brown? Do I love the fact that it's something that we've seen on the runway before and it's been adapted to be much more of a Karl Lagerfeld influence sort of style with the white and the black, the tweed, the choupette bag? Yes, absolutely. I love that element of it. Do I wish that Tom maybe went a little bit further? Yeah. Do we think it would have been really cool to see like a Chanel cardigan skirt suit sort of style manifest here instead of just jacket? Yes. Do I wish that maybe we had done like a collarless style of this sort of jacket? Yes. Do I think that there are other things that Tom could have done that are a little bit more nuanced, a little bit more fun, and almost a little bit more expected in my mind of the heightened element of Tom Brown? Yes. I just think that it falls a little bit flat it's a Tom Brown look that we did in white and black with some flowers on it in a tweed. But do I think that that captures the surface level of Carl? Absolutely. And for me, it's a little bit disappointing because I think Janelle Monet and Tom Brown are such dynamic personalities fashion-wise in and of themselves. For them to come together and present this was a little bit disappointing for me. I wanted a little bit more. Do they both carry the team on their back consistently so I will cut them slack? Absolutely. But I was expecting a lot more. Jared Leto dressed up as a gigantic cat. If you didn't think he was an asshole already, well, here you go. Next up, we have Jenna Ortega. Now, she is also wearing Tom Brown, and I think that this captures a little bit more Karl Lagerfeldian experiences, a little bit more nuance, a little bit more intrigue. Let's start from the underlayers. There's a white shirt, little collar, and a black satin little bow tie with a flower applique sitting right in the center. It's black, it's white, probably a reference to the camellia. 
Now there's a fitted black dress. The corset is there. We can also see that a high low skirt emerges. It is very sort of frothy around the sort of pelvic area. I do think that it's very Carl. If you look at the 1990s Chanel collections, there's a lot of these sort of styles where there's a lot of froth going on around the sort of hips, waist area, and then it flows out into a big sort of skirt. I do love the fact that it's all made up of tweed and I do love the fact that you have this sort of gold and pearlescent meandering chain that runs throughout a majority of the skirt and the jacket. It's a little bit more Chanel referencing. I get it. I love the froth of it. I love the length of it. It's cool. The cropped bolero jacket, again, tweed, easy, very Tom. The continuity of the chain and the pearls that run throughout is a little bit better. It feels a little bit more Carl than I think the Janelle Monet look did. And I do love the tuxedo shoes with little sort of high knee socks. But I also think it's, again, not my favorite look. I think Jenna is still, she's still working on herself. And I do think that this is an impeccable style. If you were to put this on any other red carpet, I most definitely would have put it as best dressed. It's very well done. The fit is gorgeous. The look is gorgeous. It's really exciting. It's the same thing with Janelle. It's just, it's Tom Brown. I, I always love it. But I think that this captures just a little bit more of a Carl Lagerfeldy ness And in general, again, I just kind of wish Tom went a little bit deeper. I wish there was a little bit more digging. I think it just feels more him than, again, the surface level Chanel house codes. Next up, we have Jenny Kim, who is attending the Met Gala for the first time, and she is wearing a vintage Chanel look. She is a Chanel ambassador, so it makes sense why she's going to wear Chanel. Now, this is a look from the fall 1990 ready-to-wear collection. It's essentially a satin strapless dress. It has an intriguing, almost tulip-like neckline shape. You know, it sort of comes in, it's, it scallops itself up and down and up and down. There is a black satin bow that sits right underneath the bust and a white camellia is placed on top of it. And then the skirt again sort of creates a little scallop intriguing shape and then flows out into a little bit of pleats and sits right below the knee. What I'll say is it's a very simple dress and I just think it's kind of too simplistic. I, I get it. It's Chanel. It's there. It looks really good on her. She looks beautiful. She's a stunning woman. It's just kind of blasé for your first Met Gala. You know what I mean? Like you want to show up. You want to show out. You want to do big things. This is like a quiet whisper, a murmur. It just doesn't excite. It doesn't intrigue. It doesn't feel memorable. And I don't know, there's just something about it that says, why? Out of all of the Chanel looks that you could have referenced, because I'm sure that they were given access to all of the archives and stuff like that. This is the look we choose? Really? Out of all of them? At every single one? Do I think that the pleats definitely connotate a sort of Chanel edge to it? Absolutely. The placement of the black bow and the camellia right under the bust sort of definitely has a little empire waistline nod to it. Overall, it's so simple, it's so uninteresting, it's so clean cut that it just doesn't read Met Gala E. And listen, I've kind of been yearning for somebody to wear a short dress because I think a, a skirt suit and a tweed skirt suit would have been super cool and fun, but out of all the short dresses, we chose this just a little... Uh. Next up, we have Kendall Jenner, who is wearing Marc Jacobs. This is a custom look. It's a black, fully sequined bodysuit with a very long split sleeve that comes down and creates two sort of trains. Now, the trains are actually lined in a white silk quilting sort of style, so that's where you're getting your Chanel homage. We can also see that there is this crystallized collar in silver, which I'm pretty positive is meant to sort of be the coral reference. And listen, I get it, like... In and of itself, if Kendall Jenner would walk on any other red carpet, I'd say, hot damn, she looks amazing. Best dress of the night, hands down. She looks wonderful. And you all know me. I love a kiki boot. I would, I don't know, get trampled by a kiki boot for fun. But even that doesn't make up for the fact that it just doesn't really read Super Carl. I think Mark could have done something a little bit more intriguing, a little bit more exciting, a little bit more carl E. It just feels, yeah, in terms of the theme. Listen, besides that, she looks great, wonderful. Again, the theme, that's kind of why we're here, in honor of Carl. Listen, just because it's black and it has a white collar does not mean that it reads Carl. I don't understand. I don't get it. Next up, we have Kim Kardashian. She is wearing custom Scabarelli. It is a fully pearlized halter top with a cream bodice corset that then has pearls flowing out of it again in this sort of draped style. Do I think that it reads very Chanel? Sure. 
Absolutely. You know what I mean? Pearls, easy. The draping of the pearls, sure. It maybe even has a little bit of 1920s kind of vibe to it in terms of, you know, draping the pearls all over yourself. Sure, sure, sure. But for Kim, it's so uninteresting. It's so unmemorable. It's so blasé. I do think the Scaparelli cloak stole is there. But again, I think that Daniel could have leaned more into different house codes. You don't have to just do Chanel. I think we could have done Fendi. We could have done Chloe. We could have done Patu. I think that Scaparelli doing crazy faux furs would have been amazing. You know what I mean? Like it would have been fantastic. It would have been exciting. And I mean, we just saw all of those faux animal pelts at the Haute Couture show. I just think that this feels a little bit lackluster, a little bit lazy. And I don't think Scaparelli is the only one that's doing it. You know what I mean? It just feels not thought through. It's surface level. It's boring. It's bullshit. I do think that Kim probably is, you know, trying to not cart too much controversy considering, you know, the whole Marilyn Monroe dress who made viral videos about that, you know, condemning such things. I don't know. And I'm annoyed. Oh, and on the Kim Scaparelli thing, if anybody's like, well, Chanel and Scaparelli had a rivalry. I don't want to hear the theories. Okay. It, it's a bullshit look. It's, you don't need to make excuses. Next up, we have Kylie Jenner wearing Hater Ackerman for Jean-Paul Gaultier. Essentially, she is wearing a fitted gown in red. It's one-sleeved. It exposes a little bit of cleavage and the shoulder, and it has a high slit. And then over top, she is wearing a red and light powdery blue silk jacket. Now, what I will say is I do think that the dress underneath fits her phenomenally. Again, it just, it looks great, looks wonderful, looks really cool, looks really fun. I also will say that Jean-Paul Gaultier and Karl Lagerfeld were very good friends. So again, I understand it. And weirdly enough, I think that this blue and this red are very Chanel. I get the color combo. It makes sense. It's understandable. It's something that he used quite a bit in the 1990s and the early 2000s. And again, it feels a little bit less surface level than black and white camellias, pearls, trade. Shockingly, I kind of appreciate at least this Kylie and Jean-Paul Gaultier moment for that. Do I think it could have been a little bit more exciting, a little bit more fun, a little bit more cool, a little bit more Gaultier takes on Carl's iconography? Sure, I do. But I think at this point, we all know that's expecting too much. So considering what we got, I'll take it. Next up, we have Lil Nas X, and he is not technically wearing anybody. I'm pretty positive he is wearing a full Pat McGrath designed body, jewelry, and painted look. And he is meant to also be super pet. Fully crystallized, fully pearlized, the full silver element, the underwear, the booty out and about, the boots. Again, I get it, the choupette. I just don't think it's the best choupette. I also think unless we were wearing the cat mask, I don't really think it reads choupette at all. I would like for Lil Nas X going forward to be a little bit more fashion on the carpet. I think Doja Cat does a great job of utilizing makeup to create something, but... At the same time, the garment still exists. The garment is still important. The garment still plays a role in what is going on. And I think for Lil Nas X, this is a little bit gay costume orgy. It just doesn't read Met Gala. I'm all for doing over the top. I'm all for doing avant-garde. I'm all for doing crazy. But also the clothing has to be important to it. That's the point. It's the clothing. Any other day of the week, go. Wear your full makeup look. I'm all for it. Had we done, I don't know, a crazy, amazing Chanel makeup look reference, that could have been cool. There's different ways to interpret Carl's work, but I just think that this silver painted people in your local tourist area in major big cities, sorry. Next up, we have Lizzo, and she is referencing the Fall 1991 Ready to Wear collection. Listen, it's a little bit simple. It's not super crazy. It's not over the top, but it's most definitely a Karl Lagerfeld reference. Lizzo's dress is a sleeveless style, and these pearls sort of wrap around the neckline, come down, and create this pearl sort of decadent stripe. And then at the waist, there is a sort of waist belt that flows down, also in all of these pearls. The black in the back, most definitely intriguing, has pearls going on. It's a big, long train, a little bit of a slit. I I like the jewelry on the hands. Is it my favorite Lizzo look? Not by far. But do I think that it's a Chanel reference? Sure. Do I think that it's not just, let me lump a bunch of pearls on things and call it a day? No. It's at least like an intriguing Chanel reference from a collection that people might not see all the time. Do I wish that it was a more intriguing Chanel reference? Absolutely. I do. I think that Chanel look, it's good. It's recreated for Lizzo. I'm into that vibe element of it. I think it's nice. I also think that Chanel made this, so that's also intriguing and different. But do I want a little bit more? Yeah, it feels fine. 
but it doesn't feel great, doesn't feel amazing, doesn't feel wonderful. It feels like it's there. Next up, we have Margot Robbie. She is back to wearing Chanel. Now, she is wearing a look from spring 1993, the Haute Couture collection. It is a draped strapless style in black silk chiffon. And then there is a plasticized bustier with black leather and gold chains running down the actual boning. I think it's fun. I think it's smart. I think it's cool. It looks honestly almost a little bit better than how it did on the runway because the plastic isn't like sucking in. You can't really see it, which is nice. I think it's intriguing. Then the skirt, very simple, not really meant to be the big ta-da of the look. And then a drape over top, very flowy, very 1930s. I get it. I understand it. It's fine. She looks nice. It's a good Chanel look. We don't really see that a lot for Margot, so I will take it. Again, I just think a little bit more intriguing. Good. Would have helped. Would have made one feel a little bit more better. I also feel like there are other Karl Lagerfeld houses we could have touched upon, but hey, I mean, you know, I don't really get it. The contract's over, but what in? Next up, we have Michaela Coel, and she is wearing Scaparelli. Now, this is a custom look. Now, it is a black sheer full-length gown, and it is adorned in crystals, in gold. Now, what I will say is there probably a sheer sort of reference to like fall 1991 here. But I think the thing that's really intriguing about this Gaparelli look is that Daniel more so looked at, I would say the costume jewelry element of Chanel and the fact that Carl understood that that was very, very important to the house. We can see up top of the neck, there is this really dense sort of cluster of big crystals that are pearlescent, they're white, and they're almost gold looking. We then can move to the breast area. And in reality, there is a very large gold sort of cross that is on one bust and a big sort of pearl and crystal brooch on the other. I personally think that that gold sort of style in that cross figurine is very much so a Chanel reference. If you look at Coco Chanel's costume jewelry, it's very Baroque inspired. It's inspired a lot by Catholic Christian imagery and Christianity in a lot of the different ways. And Chanel brooch is also very sort of important. And as you move down the rest of the dress, there are sort of Scaparelli signatures like lips, but also mixed in with iconic Chanel styles like the gold chains that run through on the sleeve there. There's a very large sort of almost peacock-like big sort of gold piece with a big sort of pearl in it as well. Again, we're bringing back the pearls. Very Chanel, sort of coated. I will say I don't really understand the strand that runs like right under the pelvic area with like the tassels. I'm sure I get it, but like weird placement, don't love it. And then the rest of the look, very sort of crystallized, nothing really super duper crazy going on. Listen, I do understand, I think, what we're going for here. And I do think it's smart to pay homage to the jewelry element of what Carl did and the house of Chanel. I also think it's a bit simple for Scaparelli. It's beautiful. It's gorgeous. It took a lot of time. I'm not saying it didn't. I'm just saying I think the concept is a little bit no, oh, okay, we've seen it. And again, I know people can be like, oh, well, Scaparelli and Chanel hated each other, but like, it's not a Chanel exhibit. So Scaparelli, like all of these other brands, could have taken inspiration from Chloe or Fendi or any number of designers. Again, not really a cop-out. I don't want to hear that excuse. Next up, we have Nicole Kidman, who pulled out one of her own archival Chanel looks, which I think is much cooler than pulling out just a regular archival look. Now, Nicole Kidman was in the Chanel number no. 5 ads in 2004, and so she is wearing this beautiful pale pink sheerish dress that is adorned with beautiful feathers and crystals that runs all the way down. It creates a little bit of a high-low effect. It's like a sweeping bang of feathers that ruffle themselves out and a little bit of a sheer sort of train that flows out on top. Is it the most exciting, the most crazy, the most kooky, the most over-the-top Chanel look? No. But do I think that as somebody with, you know, a real sort of understanding and a working relationship with Chanel and with Carl in the past, that it's cool and that it's smart and that it's fun and that it brings out a little bit of a quirky history some might not know. Yeah, I do. I think that it adds a different layer to archival style, especially when you're re-wearing something you've already worn. The dress fits are great. It's really, really sweet. I do I wish it was obviously super crazy over the top, wonderful, of course. But at the same time, I understand why it was done. I think that the context of why it was done is also very, very cool. It's sustainable. You know what I mean? Full circle, circular fashion. I'm into that. And lastly, for this part one of our Met Gala 2023 fashion roast and review, we got to talk about Rihanna and ASAP Rocky, who made me wait a little bit too long. Let's talk about ASAP first, because ASAP actually wore a look that was dedicated to Carl. It's a black jacket, white high collar, skinny black tie, plaid skirt style, embellished jeans, and black 
boots. Now, Carl most definitely was referencing and wearing Eddie Slaman's Dior Homme at the time. It was something that he got really into. It's because he went on a diet. I got the diet book right here. From the point that he lost a lot of weight in the early 2000s, he was very dedicated to Eddie Slaman's work and his Dior Homme style. That's why ASAP is referencing this here. The look is actually inspired by the 2006 look that Carl wore on the red carpet runway when he walked out after the show. I think ASAP is really, really smart for doing it. It's fun. It's funky. It pays homage to Carl without being white powdered wig and just black jacket and black pants and fingerless gloves. I'm happy with ASAP on that. As for Rihanna, she's wearing custom Valentino haute couture, a camellia style hood that goes over a very long flowing dress in all white. She looks a little bit like the bride at the end of a Chanel show. It's okay, but it's not great. It's not wonderful. And it was not worth the wait. For the first time on the red carpet, kind of flopped. And my issue is we saw that really beautiful look that she wore over the weekend in the fur. It was Chanel reference. It was really cool. It was really beautiful. It made me happy and it went viral. I think that that look should have been what she wore here. It's not that this isn't a good Valentino look in general. I think it's beautiful. It captures Pier Paolo's love of these enlarged sort of flowers. It definitely captures the Chanel camellia essence of Chanel. But is it really great? Is it really memorable? Is it really super exciting and wonderful? No. And then when we look at the dress from up top, it's a fitted sort of style, it covers the baby bump, and it's a big sort of flowing skirt. And again, I know people are going to be like, well, she's pregnant, da, 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 da. but like she wore the fur look when she's pregnant too. So I, I'm confused. I don't want to hear it. She also wore a Chanel look to announce her pregnancy. So again, I don't want to hear it. It's just not great. It's fine. It's whatever. It's unmemorable. It's, it's almost a little bit of a flop, to be honest, because everybody was waiting, 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 and then that. It's like when you order your McDonald's french fries and you're like, they're going to be crispy, they're going to be hot, they're going to be precise. And then they get there and they're soggy and cold and wet. That's how I feel. If we'd been on time, it might have been a little bit different. It's not the Rihanna I know and that I love on that red carpet right there. So that is the end of our part one. Let's talk about best and worst. As for our best, I'm going to have to give it to Anne Hathaway and Bad Bunny each. As for worst, Ice Spice in the Bound Man. That was bad. That was really bad. Kim Kardashian. Shockingly, I'm going to put Rihanna in there. I'm sorry. So thank you guys for watching this part one. Part two is coming very soon. And part three and part four are also coming. So stay tuned. We will see you guys in the next video. And TTYL.